Hi, now let's talk about covalent network solids. So notice I don't say covalent solids. Um, when we're talking about solids with covalent bonding, we call them molecular solids. Um, this is special because of that word right there, network. Um, covalent network solids. So this is going to be considered different from just a regular covalent bond. Um, and what's special about it is that these covalent bonds make a network. Um, really interesting. These are the strongest of all the intramolecular molecular forces. So remember, intramolecular forces, those are the forces that hold atoms together in compounds. Intermolecular forces, those are the forces that hold molecules together in liquids and solids. So the strongest, this is EG bond, strongest, strongest, strongest. Um, of all of our forces. So holding these atoms together, um, not only in a bond, but then in a network within, um, with each other. So um, you can either have a 2D or a 3D network of covalent bonds. Um, it's where these bonds all bond to themselves, making these really cool rigid structures. Um, it forms with carbon and silicon because they only have four valence electrons. And so um, they're able to bond with themselves four different times. Uh, so carbon could bond with four other carbons in a 3D um, network. They're very, very hard. Um, diamond is actually an example of a covalent network. And on the most scale, diamond is our hardest natural substance. Um, they have really crazy highest melting points and boiling points, but we don't want to melt a diamond anyway. Um, okay, some examples for you. A 3D covalent network. So this is going to be carbon looking three dimensionals dimensionally bonding to itself with four different carbons. Um, so diamond, number one quintessential example. Silicon also does a 3D covalent network. And just as a reminder, uh, silicon is where we use semiconductors. So it increases conductivity when you decrease the, uh, the temperature. Excuse me. The angles are fixed and very, very rigid. Hence, oh look, there's my diamond. My, my husband gave that to me many years ago, almost 25 years ago. Wow. I know you're saying I don't look that old. No, I really do. Um, we also have a 2D structure. Um, very common example, quartz, silicon dioxide. You might have some quartz somewhere in your house and that is a covalent network structure. We also have a silicon carbide is going to be um, a covalent network. Graphite, so the end of your pencil. Here I have it. Graphite right there, end of the pencil. There it is. Um, that's an allotrope of carbon. It's um, three-dimensional. Now, the reason why this is soft is um, because it has these layers that slide past each other and kind of fun. So you've seen this a million times. I mean, right? It leaves behind the graphite. The reason why it leaves behind that graphite is what holds these together is London dispersion forces. And so I apply enough force to overcome the London dispersion forces and it leaves a layer of graphite behind. Cool. Chemistry at work, everyday chemistry right there. Um, so there you have it, covalent network, strongest of our intramolecular forces. Remember diamond and quartz, you'll be good to go. Have a really good day. If you need to look at molecular solids, ionic solids, metallic solids, check out those videos on Lean Think. Thank you, bye.